Hello, everybody. So I just uh, climbed down from the uh, the crow's nest up there, and I am going to uh, show you guys where we should go next. So um, in terms of progressing through the game, the next place to go is a place called Blight Town. But we are not going to go there. We are going to go uh, back over by the blacksmith. So uh, we've seen that enough times that we uh, we don't need to show that again, I don't think. You may have noticed that I was uh, taking the long way to the blacksmith right now. And that is true. I should have, if I was just trying to get to the blacksmith as quickly as possible, just uh, taking the elevator up from by that uh, that cleric. But uh, taking this long way actually allows me to show you guys a little bit of um, a, it's, it's just a bonfire that we haven't accessed yet. Uh, a bit later on in the game, it is a little bit useful to have this bonfire available. So you see that we do the usual thing and get those uh, get those monsters killed. And now this is a little bit tedious. You just have to walk into this wall right here, uh, and eventually the Drake gets angry about you walking into the wall. Just uh, give him a little bit of time here, and he will jump forward. There we go. And we don't want to we don't want to mess with him right now. This is sort of the same way that we tried to get the uh, Drake Sword in melee. And he'll breathe fire, but at this point we can easily withstand one fire blast at least. And then just run beneath it. Here is the bonfire that we were looking for. We can also open up this door here with the lever, and that will actually stay open. Unlike most bonfires, this one's not a very safe place to be in. Alrighty, now that we are at this bonfire, you can see that uh, I could choose to level up my vitality a bit more, get a little bit more health. Um, some people have been saying that I should upgrade some more strength to, hand, or to one hand the Drake Sword, but uh, I don't think I'm going to do that. The strength doesn't really pay off much late game is the big thing. Uh, vitality always does. Uh, why, that's a fine ember you have there. I could smith some mighty weapons with one of those. Why not lend it to me? Yes, there's never a uh, a trick here, never a bad choice to give the ember to a blacksmith. Magnificent! You won't be disappointed. I can hardly wait to get started. Alrighty, well let's let him get started then. Um, what I want to do is I want to upgrade my Uchigatana here. Uh oh, so if I can find that. Or actually, you can see that we don't have any Titanite shards, but we can actually buy those from him. So, we'll uh, start off with five of those. And reinforce weapon. Uchi Katana's down here. And we can bring it up. Up to uh, plus four. And. He still doesn't want to see us go hollow. This is a good time to uh, to burn some souls, I think, even. I'll equip that one, because burning five going through the menu is a little bit of a pain. And I'll manually use that one. Um, oh, so just to, just to show you how many souls we need here, uh, to reinforce this weapon one more time, because plus five is going to look like a maximum. Uh, but it isn't, so we need to get three in order to upgrade it once more to plus five. I'll be seeing you there. And be careful out there. There's our soul of a nameless soldier, and one of those will give us enough to uh, buy another one, and then it'll cost us money to actually start upgrading. So burn one more there. Well, uh, you need it. Now we'll come over here. We'll purchase two tight or three titanite shards. Okay, and go to reinforce weapon again, get that up to plus five, and you see the Uchi Katana now has disappeared from this menu, but if we go to modify equipment, this is what that, uh, that large ember that we just gave him does, is it allows you to bring this up to the plus six level, at which point large titanite shards start to be used to upgrade it. Uh, we can also go with raw, but raw is actually just not good. Just don't ever make a raw weapon. At least not right now. The game, it's not a good choice right now. 
So we modify it there. This is a little bit of a clunky interface, I think. But, uh... Because we've got to come back over here now. We can upgrade it there. We need one more large Titanite Shard, and we'd be able to upgrade this puppy to plus 8. Um, and you can see it's now doing 153 damage. It is already rivaling our Drake Sword. And we can one-hand it without upgrading our strength. And uh, it didn't hurt us at all late game to get to get stats in order to use it. So that is a big reason of why I am not one-handing the Drake Sword. While we're here, we might as well repair our equipment. At least the equipment that we use. Looks like we're in a little bit of a soul crunch. I'll actually burn another soul to... Uh, Neither of us want to burn another soul in order to repair all of my equipment. Especially because... Actually, no. I will... Uh, I will do one better. I will buy the repair box that he sells. Burn all three of these. We're out of soul items, but well, uh, you need it. We have enough to purchase an item here, and that item that we want is a repair box. Yes, we do. Um, especially, that's especially important if you do wield the uchi katana or any of the katana type weapons. Uh, because they have such low durability, you need to keep them uh, topped off at bonfires. It's too much of a pain to go and find a uh, find a blacksmith every time you need to repair them. And just to keep this from getting cluttered up with stuff, we'll just repair everything. And now we're gonna start using the uh, the Uchi Katana again. And it's probably, I would say, actually our best option at this point. I, I, I would argue that a 153 damage Uchi Katana is better than a 200 damage Drake Sword, given that you have to two-hand the Drake Sword and one-hand the Uchi Katana. Oh, this guy's super tough. Uh, the upgraded Uchi Katana and having combustion means that I could probably try and kill him, but uh... There's actually, he he drops a piece of titanite that you can loot, use to uh, upgrade things late game, and so you might as well just put off on killing him. Oh yeah, we are doing plenty of damage to these new freaky, uh, freaky plant friends that we have. That's a good thing. Good time to upgrade, good time to upgrade. There is an alternate path over here that takes you to some pretty sweet stuff, but uh, it gets pretty pretty dangerous pretty fast, so I'm gonna avoid that for now. One thing that you can do in order to increase drop rate, I'm not gonna do it, just sort of out of personal preference, but just let you guys know, the higher your humanity is, um, the higher enemies drop rate is, so if you're coming here just to farm items, uh, not to advance or get levels or anything else, uh, Burning a couple of humanity just to uh, just to increase your drop rate is not necessarily the worst idea. Around two or three is a good number if that's the only reason why you're getting it. The blacksmith back there sells a key that opens up this door right here. Costs 20,000 souls. There's actually an illusory wall right here. Yes. Generally, there's like signs on the ground and stuff. I don't really know why there aren't at the moment. I guess maybe people just advance past this this part of the game at this point. Um, rest at this bonfire in order to make sure that we respawn at it. And uh, yeah, so in general, there's there's not really any good way to know this is an illusory wall other than to notice that there was a chunk of wall here that uh, looked it was shaped like a doorway. So. If you see me taking swings at walls that, uh, that don't do anything, I'm not just being silly. Sometimes walls do disappear when you hit them. And if you come over here, there's some items, but items are just like almost always a trap in this game. So you can see that there's uh, there's plant dudes hiding underground here. And they will trigger. Maybe I need to actually pick up the item to trigger them. Okay, I'll fall for it. Your trap is sprung. Well done. Well done, Plantman. Um, I'm actually just going to throw a fireball at these guys. This is a good way uh, to farm for items that cure poison and toxic and bleeding also. Is you can just come down here with some fire magic and, and roast some plants. 
See that one there will uh, cure bleeding. Oh, he lived through that. I, <laughs> I had to stop being so full of myself about my fire magic. Just, uh, oh yeah, I hit him with a one, so he's dead. That cures poison. And a blooming purple monst clump cures both poison and toxic. Traversing the white light. This one does not lead to a boss, I happen to know. Probably have my Estus Flask selected, though. Um, so it doesn't lead to a boss, but it does lead to some pretty tough stuff. If you look over there, that's a... Uh, you can maybe make out some legs there. Mostly just look like a pile of rocks. But a big stone golem actually uh, will rise up from those rocks if you walk over there. So I recommend just kind of skirting around the edges and, and picking up some odds and ends. This here, uh, see these vines here? Did you notice that these vines have heads? Oh, did you notice that there was something sneaking up behind me while I was telling you about the uh, the vines with heads? Because I didn't. Yeah, the vines have heads here. This is actually a lizard, a well camouflaged lizard. So uh, just just make sure that you swing at him, otherwise he can poison you. And then you can pick up a weapon. I'll probably go through here. Let me know if you guys want me to do this. Uh, and just at the start of one of my videos, I could cycle through the different equipment that I have at this point, so you guys can see what it looks like. But, uh, I like to focus on, you know, the stuff that I'm going to use more so, because, uh, I like to use what I know works, I guess is all there is to say about that. And if you skirt around the edge here, you can actually get through here, only fighting this one golem. Um, so, he's pretty fat, right? You really kind of want to use the uh, get behind him strategy. But he casts this spell. It's called gravity. You can actually get it, and it's super cheap in PvP. But, uh, that spell makes it so that you can't roll and you move slower. up these stairs it's going to be something pretty spectacular looking the moon knight butterfly so this boss uh, deals magic damage has some almost guaranteed hits on you and uh, is pretty much uh, invulnerable to anything but ranged attacks for most of the time. But, as he's sees, uh, he's doing some damage to me for sure. But... Oh, that was a poorly timed Estus Blast. Switching around, using Estus Flask now. But you mostly just want to keep your guard up while he's doing this. I'll check and see if I can't hit him with a fireball. Okay, you actually can. Alright, cool, cool. Oh no. No, no, no. Don't use Estus Flasks then. Um, so just block and then throwing fireballs seems to work, just because he's a big enough target even if he does move around. But this here is really, uh, really where you get him, is you can just roast him or slash away at him, whatever you've got. When he comes here, he's trying to eat some of the, uh, some of the plant life. And we are just gonna one-shot him. Yeah, that explosion's gonna hurt a lot if it goes off. No, I killed him before the explosion could go off. Alright. So that boss, uh, if you know what you're doing, not the, not the most difficult thing in the world. You don't want to try and, like spam him down or anything, because you'll just end up leaving yourself really open. Um, 3,000 souls. Not really all that many souls at this point in the game. But the other thing that you get for killing him is that uh, soul of a moonlight butterfly. And uh, I'd say none of the boss souls in this game, you probably shouldn't, if you want to see like everything in the game, use them to level up. You can burn them to just get souls, but uh... It's not the best idea. What you also get, though, is a uh, watchtower basement key. And also a divine ember. Divine ember allows you to make divine weapons. Imagine that. 